So I'm back here in this Elven Warrior rig, and I'm, I've got a pretty good way that I'm going to be making some dynamic chains to move around with the character when the character moves. So right here, uh, I have the drawing, just the sketch design for it. <clears throat> but I'm going to recreate that with paths here, or strokes, I should say. So to start um, on the top of this, and create a new layer, call it chain one, and just having it on top of everything, I want to follow the basic shape that I want. These are going to be kind of like, sort of like a general tassels. I don't know what those things are called, but they look pretty cool. Um, cool character design. And I can open up this shape, go to stroke. I want to make sure that that's a round cap and also a round join. Then I'm going to add two dashes, one, two. And essentially just the second dash just gives you the uh, option to alter the gap and offset, which I'll be definitely utilizing here. So. I'm going to create a bigger gap. Uh, I don't need these to be huge, but I want the dashes to be similar, similar in length to the drawing. And that looks pretty close. So I'm going to make it just a, a hair bigger. Too big? No, nah, no, that's good. And now I'm going to take chain one and control D duplicate on top. Now going into the shape layer, or the shape panel there, I can go to the stroke and the dashes. And I want to keep the dash size, the gap size the same. I only want to mess with the offset here. And I also want to mess with the size, the width of the overall, the overall lines. So selecting that, I'm going to make some wider ones, about there. And I'll offset them from the originals a little bit. All of this I can definitely mess with, so. I also want to go ahead and take the path here and I can pick whip it to the path of chain one. So basically chain one will do all the movement and chain two will just keep the exact same shape. I'd be able to you know, lock that layer and they will both move together once I do that. Just to give you an example. There it is. So, that looks like shit, you say? I agree. <laughs> but there's one more step here. So, taking chain two now, I'm going to right click. Layer styles, add a stroke style. And going down to the options, I can mess with it. Um, to put it center. No, let's put it inside. And make it bigger. So the width kind of matches the other one. We'll get the color to match also. And now in blending options, advanced blending, you can lower the fill opacity to zero. And now we have two chain links that will move together. Uh, I'm going to 
get rid of my other one here so you can kind of see and now I can just mess around with the uh, offset I'll actually go whoops back into that's not a bad idea back into chain one or chain two and just offset this <clears throat> and ideally they should be able to move completely together without losing their um, their linkage so let's test this theory out and as you move it around it shapes all together uh, very very cool Now there are also ways that this could be further manipulated and I'll show you that right now. So unshy them or <laughs> unsolo. <clears throat> yeah, that looks, that looks pretty perfect where it's at. Uh, I'm going to add an extra point here, an extra point here. And now I'm going to go into the bottom path, go into window, create nulls from paths, and that should ship with After Effects to plug in. Um, that comes with After Effects and it's free. You might need to download it uh, if you don't have it in there already, but want to select points follow nulls. This creates a null that will now control every single point that's there. And I only need this for one reason and that reason is to make the uh, chains swing. <clears throat> I'm going to actually duplicate these. Do the same for the other side. I will fast forward through that. Just as a note, if you do have to flip anything like this with the original having the uh, nulls from paths effect on it, you have to delete the effect. Uh, in the effect panel, which I did here, but just a side note. I'm going to go ahead and attach all these attach points to their respective locations on my rig. So these I'm going to attach to the neck and so forth. Um, Last thing I want to do here is attach these dangling parts. I'm actually just going to name them one, two, three, four because I don't really feel like wasting time on this renaming process. So after some deliberation, uh, I'm going to actually just attach these sections where they need to go on the torso. Uh, I don't need to add anything other than that. I think it'll move pretty well without any time delay, but you could add a time delay if you want. It's fairly complicated, but um, more complicated than I want to get right now anyway. So uh, I'm going to attach everything where it needs to go. I'm attaching this to the arm, the upper arm. I'm going to attach the this one to 
I believe that is the spine or the chest. I'm going to attach it to the chest, torso, chest. This one to the right arm. <clears throat> And this one also to the chest bone. And we'll see how everything moves. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Once I rig these shoulder pads to move with the arm, it's all gonna move even even better. But I like the look of that so far. Just adds another level of dynamic dynamics to it. All right, and that's kind of it. Responsive chain or a dynamic chain link. I hope that was useful for you. Um, I was really pleased to discover that that worked the way that I wanted it to. So uh, stay tuned, got more of these coming. Uh, like and subscribe at the bottom. And if you have any comments, you think you have a better way of doing this or, you know, just want to tell me that it, it was cool, please do. I, I need positive reinforcement. <laughs> I'm stuck in a basement all day. All right, till next time, take care.